The Casey readings define the meaning of Essene as expectancy. Given the prophetic emphasis of the movement, this is certainly a reasonable interpretation. Another extremely common word found in Casey's readings that discuss the Essenes is preparation. This is a natural outgrowth of expectancy that suggests a profound understanding of the nature of prophecy. The way in which the Messiah was to manifest and the degree of success in his mission was contingent upon their activity. Thus the need for preparation in very specific ways to ensure that the prophecy would be fulfilled as given. Since the Messiah was to be born of a virgin, it was essential to provide a suitable vessel for the incarnation. Taking no chances, the Essenes at Mount Carmel were not content to prepare a single maiden for the honor. Instead, 12 maidens were selected as candidates, each representing one of the 12 tribes of Israel. The girls were the best of the best in every way, physical, mental, and spiritual. In this secluded school, they were trained, directed, and protected. At the age of four, Mary, daughter of Anne, was one of 12 maidens dedicated as a candidate. Between 12 and 13 years of age, Mary was selected from among the 12 maidens as the mother of the future Messiah. The selection event in itself is noteworthy. As the sun rose, the 12 maidens were ascending the temple steps to the altar for morning prayer and burning of incense. Mary was leading the way when upon reaching the top step, there was thunder and lightning. An angel took Mary by the hand and led her to the altar. With this dramatic event, the fulfillment of the prophecies of old moved one step closer to realization. As part of the preparations for the birth of the Messiah, a marriage had been arranged for Mary with a fellow Essene, Joseph, a carpenter. During those times, marriages were typically arranged by the parents of the contracting parties. In this instance, the arrangement involved the input from the leaders of the Essene community. Essentially, Joseph was appointed to be the husband of Mary, which met the needs of all parties concerned. Joseph was 36 and Mary was 16 at the time of the ceremony. After the marriage was arranged, but before the wedding ceremony, an angel informed Mary that she was pregnant with a child, conceived by the Holy Ghost. The Casey readings affirm the virgin birth of Jesus, as well as the immaculate conception of Mary within the womb of her mother, Anne. Casey observed that the idea of immaculate conception and virgin birth is a stumbling stone to many worldly wise. On several occasions, Casey was asked directly about the process of immaculate conception and virgin birth. His replies focused on the need for the spiritual purity and attunement of the mother. He explained that the soul is neither male or female but has the innate ability to project itself into materiality, to materialize, as it were. For thousands of years, souls manifested in this manner before becoming so deeply earthbound so as to lose touch with their spiritual heritage. The soul who was to be born as Jesus retained that capacity of materialization as he would later demonstrate in some of his more dramatic miracles, such as manifesting food and raising the dead. With regard to Mary's condition, Joseph first received notice of the pregnancy from the Essene elders, Matthias and Judah. He was assured that this was God's will and that the Essene community would support the marriage. Yet understandably, Joseph was distraught. What would people say? He had a dream telling him that Mary's pregnancy was of the divine and not to worry. Still, he was upset. Then, in a vision accompanied with odors and lights, a voice confirmed that Mary was righteous and that he should go through with the marriage and raise the child as his own. Finally, Joseph was convinced and his mind was at ease. 
During her pregnancy, Mary spent most of the time in the hills of Judea with her cousin Elizabeth. She was present with Joseph in Nazareth at times, and it was from Nazareth that the couple traveled to Bethlehem to register for Roman taxation. To completely fulfill the prophecy, preparations of another sort were underway near Jerusalem. A forerunner or wayshore was to be born to prepare the way of the Lord. John, who would later become known as the Baptist, was to be born to a cousin of Mary named Elizabeth. Elizabeth was a devout Essene Jew, married to Zacharias, an Orthodox priest at the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Casey notes that due to the persecution of Essenes by the Orthodox Jews, Zacharias kept Elizabeth in the hills away from Jerusalem for her safety. The couple was at an advanced age when Zacharias had a vision in which the angel Gabriel told him that he and Elizabeth would have a son. His disbelief resulted in his being struck dumb. He could not utter a word until the birth of his son. During her pregnancy, Elizabeth was visited by her cousin Mary. Elizabeth intuited that Mary was with child, the Messiah. Mary resided with Elizabeth in the hills outside of Jerusalem during much of her pregnancy. Casey states that when Zacharias announced the birth of his son and his belief in the Essene doctrines, he was slain in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem with his hands upon the horns of the altar. Casey referred to Zacharias as the first of the martyrs. In the years that followed, Elizabeth and her son were protected and supported by the Essene community, who recognized John as the prophesied forerunner to the Messiah. 